Go, y'all go. All right, thank y'all for doing that. Please be seated. Please be seated. All right, so by a show of hands, who has seen the movie Encanto? You have to be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yo. Yeah. What have you been doing with your lives? So, so okay, by a show of hands, who has not seen the movie Encanto? You got to be. I got a lot of work to do. I thought y'all had at least seen the movie, but, but no, okay, all right. It's not like I'm pressed for time or anything. All right. <laughs> so let's do some backstory. In the year 2020, like I said, COVID was out and nobody could go out. You couldn't go to the movies, you couldn't go to church, you couldn't go see your friends, everybody was locked in the house, okay? So, um, that made it hard on the film industry. We lost $30 billion in one year. Yeah, yeah, that's my amen corner if y'all didn't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they lost so much money that movies would get taken out of the theaters um, after 30 days. If they didn't perform, they get taken down. And you're looking at one of the movies that was taken down after 30 days, they did not keep it in theaters. Why? Because it bombed. Nobody went to see that movie. Y'all didn't go see it. <laughs> Nobody went to go see the movie. So what they did instead was they put it on a little thing called Disney Plus. My, my God. My God. Y'all excuse my son. Y'all excuse me. <laughs> they put it on a thing called Disney Plus. And what had happened... Was it blew up? Yeah. Everybody saw it when it was on Disney Plus, but they did not go see it in the theaters. So it received so many awards and it made little money at first. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's my guy. He's, he, he really wants the mic, that's the problem. Um, so it received so many awards. And one of the awards was a Grammy. The Grammy was best song for a visual production. And does anybody know what that song was called? We Don't Talk About Bruno. Yes, for those of you that haven't seen it, watch the film. But there was a song said, We Don't Talk About Bruno. And everybody lost their minds over the song. It was a hit, smash hit, everybody singing it. We actually opened to the music, if you didn't catch it, which y'all didn't, because you didn't watch the film. <laughs> so we actually opened to the music of We Don't Talk About Bruno. And throughout the entire movie, um, this is about a family in South America that is struggling because they don't talk about Bruno, okay? Um, and it was one of the reasons that they were divided. Um, uh, I see a lot of faces that are newish to me. I haven't really gotten a chance to see it, but for the most part, um, I know all of you. Um, I'd be the one up there in the nest that don't come down until y'all be leaving, right? But I know all of you, okay? And we come together so often as a family, as a community, and one of the things of this themes of this movie is unity. Now. I'm gonna unpack that in a, while, in a second, but before I can unpack that, I need to go ahead and set the scene. So the first thing we about to see is we're going to meet Mirabelle. Everybody say, hi, Mirabelle. Hi. Mirabelle is the, she is a daughter in the South American family and the South American family all has a special thing about them, but Mirabelle does not. Okay, and while the candle burns, this magical candle burns, each member of the Magical family has a unique ability, a unique supernatural power, if you will. And uh, she is in the part of the family, but she does not have 
the gift. She champions her family and she champions everybody around her, but for her, there is just one slight problem. We're working on it. <laughs> what had happened was again, like I said, uh, Brother Alfonso was the Wizard of Oz. He said, "Give him, give me, give him one minute." Okay, that's what he's saying. I'm gonna give him one minute. <laughs> um. So, you're going to see the scene in a second, but for those that have their Bibles, because we still do that sort of thing, um, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. And Isaiah, you can just cue me when he's ready, all right? Everybody that have it, say Amen. Everybody that don't say wait. wait. All right, we waiting. We waiting. What, what was it? It was 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. All right, pulse check. Everybody have it? Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to read the verse, and then he'll let me know. Hold up. You, he's, does he have it? He's got it? All right. To the whiz. You have no gift. Thanks. Oh, and tell Antonio good luck. Last gift ceremony was a bummer. Last one being yours, that, that did not work. Mm -hmm. If I was you, I'll be really sad. Well, my little friend, I am not. Because the truth is, gift or no gift, I am just as special as the rest of my family. Who wants more cake? All right, guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 20. Um, and it reads, yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. The parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. I will read verse 25 and 26 one more time. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to see another day and come together one more time. Now we are in this space, God. Speak to your people, God. I render my preparation. I yield my notes. I yield my tongue, God. Speak through me like never before. God, do what only you can do. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. All right. So... Growing up in the mean streets of Baldwin, Missouri, um, I grew up um, a, a little differently. Um, 
we were in a space where there were not too many African-American influencers. Um, wasn't a lot of us. Um, and my father, he had a rule um, for, his, uh, for, his, for his sons. And the rule was, um, I think we can, we can mute the video until it's ready. I think that's the video line. Thank you. Um, and the rule was, if one of you get in a fight, all of you better be in a fight, or y'all got to fight me. Yeah, he, don't, he, didn't say the, he didn't say the or else, right? But <laughs> all of you got to get in a fight, or else y'all got to fight me. And in case you didn't know, um, Bishop Lee, which is like the warm and fuzzy guy back now, like now, he was not. He was not that guy back in the day. He was elderly, and elderly, you didn't want to fight, okay? So, um, this put us in a lot of precarious situations, which reminds me of the film. The reason that it puts me in a precarious situation is because I know that I have to protect my brother even when I don't want to, right? I got to protect him even when what they saying is actually right, right? So I can remember a time in sixth grade where one of my friends, he had something to say about my twin. Now, I'm not saying what he was saying was wrong. But what I'm saying is he was saying it around me. See, one of the first things that we, that we deal with in terms of the division and an obstacle to the unity that God speaks of is disrespect. This is the thing that we don't talk about. We don't talk about Bruno, don't we? Well, let's talk about it. Disrespect. And it wasn't disrespect to me. It was disrespect to somebody connected to me. And he didn't understand the dynamic that we had. So because he didn't understand the dynamic that we had, he didn't think that he was disrespecting me. But he was disrespecting me. So I said nothing. I didn't, I didn't, I said not a mumbling word. But my face, my countenance, everything changed. Because I am uncomfortable with the fact that you so comfortable talking about my twin. I'm going to say this again. I am uncomfortable with the fact that you so comfortable talking about somebody that's so closely connected to me. And what happens to us, right, we get around people that did not do the infraction, but they was around the infraction, and they didn't do nothing about it. So I got to look at you with a squint, too. It's not just the disrespect to me. It's the tolerance of disrespect. This scene that we just saw, I mean, yeah, it's funny. You know, it's, we laugh a little bit. But understand that this is a tragedy. Because this man, like, and again, the St. Louis in me comes up. Because, like, you ain't about to come to my house to talk about my sibling. You, that, ain't, that just ain't about to happen. Like, he, he felt comfortable enough to walk in and just say, like, hey, this is the not-so-special special since you ain't got no gift. Like, the nerve. The, the, the unmitigated gall. Now, truly, again, it is not his fault because he doesn't understand the dynamic that should be present in family because he was taking his cues from the family itself. The family allowed this, which meant, well, if they are treating her this way, that means I can treat her this way. That's disrespect. Sometimes we get environments where, like, it is people around us that get very comfortable in disrespect. Like, you know that's wrong. 
And now I can't say nothing about it because I ain't got nobody to stand in with me. I'm in my house and don't feel safe. Since you have no gift. What? If you don't get your mall, car, mall cop mustache out of here. Like, it, it is that type of bond and, and unity that means that you can't treat anybody I'm connected to that type of way. That creates divisions, right? Because I can only be cool with you but so, but so much. Because at any given time, I'm not safe with you. Because every time I talk to you, you telling me what they said. But you, but they were so comfortable around you to say it. Which means that you really ain't for me. Again, I ain't got the time. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pressing. I got to show these. I got, I got to show these clips. But it's the disrespect that we don't talk about. We don't talk about the disrespect because we feel like we ain't got no backup. And if I say something to you, I don't even think that you'll take it seriously. Hey, that hurt my feelings. Hey, I don't like it when you do this. Hey. They said this around you, but I'm trying to figure out why you was there and why you had that conversation. We don't talk about that disrespect. And I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about church. I'm talking about us, that God called us to be family, that we were supposed to be members of one body. This is us. We don't talk about the disrespect of each other and the tolerance of disrespect. That's what we don't talk about. Another theme that we don't talk about. Again, we got another clip. We're about to show. Hopefully, the Wiz got it up. But another clip that we're about to show, it's in the midst of these disrespectful neighbors and this tolerant family members that we find Mirabelle, and she is conflicted. She's conflicted because um, she's trying her best to still support her family and support her little cousin, which and her, his name is Antonio, and this is his time to get what she never got, right? So she has to deal with another division that we don't want to talk about. Let's roll the clip. Strength and no hope.
So yeah, he gets his gift. Yay, Antonio. Yay, Antonio. Yay, Antonio. But what about Maribel? <laughs> Maribel had to walk the same steps. She had to walk and walk the same path to the same people, the same disrespectful people that don't care nothing about the fact that she doesn't have a gift. She, she got to walk. She got to walk through those people one more time. Another thing that we don't talk about is we don't talk about disappointment. Disappointment comes in a lot of forms, but the three major ones, disappointment with God, disappointment with yourself, and disappointment with other people. The first thing that we address is the disappointment with God. Now, we believe that God can do anything. That's what we believe. He has the power to do anything but fail. That's what we believe. We believe that God's will is perfect. That's what we believe. But what happens when God's will don't agree with you? What happens when you are you living right, you're doing everything right, and the things just still don't turn out right? And then you got to come here and, and worship and praise a God that you ain't really vibing with right now. God is taking me on a path that I don't agree with. And now I have to look and smile in your face. Like everything's okay. We don't, we don't talk about the disappointment. We just come, we smile, we shout, we sing, we laugh, we dance. And then at the end of it, after the smoke clears, we miserable. And not only is our, our misery uh, something that we got to deal with, misery loves company. So you're going to find more miserable people. And if not, you're going to make more miserable people because you ain't dealt with your disappointment. Some of us are still disappointed in decisions God made. Some of us are still wrestling like, why did you do this? I don't understand it. I don't get it. We see this in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 16, He's talking to his disciples. Jesus turns to his disciples and says, hey, it's time for me to go back to Jerusalem. I got to, there's some suffering I have to do. And the first person that speaks up is Peter. Y'all know Peter. He's like, hey, no, that's not going to happen. Surely not. Nothing's going to happen to you. And Jesus looks to Peter and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because Every carnal conversation that you have to have, Jesus has to have two conversations. He has to address you and he has to address the spirit. Because it's not just about what I have to do and about your disappointment. If I allow your disappointment to distract me, then I would have come for nothing. Undealt with disappointment can become a distraction. You want to sit in your disappointment and you want to stay miserable. They did this and they did this and they did this. They did that 20 years ago. Shoot, I'm getting, I'm getting a little too personal. <laughs> they did that a lifetime ago. But you still stuck in disappointment. You still stuck in that space and you never got out. I had to sit in the same place of disappointment and I got to watch people and they and they get their blessing and they get their gift while I'm just sitting here in my disappointment. I'm just I'm just here. But like but like 
the movie, she's on the sidelines watching Antonio thrive in the same space that she failed. So how, is I, how am I really supposed to be happy? Explain to me how, what, what the win is here. Please, let me know. But Mirabelle doesn't. She sits there and she smiles and she waves and she's happy for him. She's happy for him. Yes, she is happy for him, but she has undealt with disappointment. And she's saying, I, wanna, I want the gift too. And in the next three minutes, she goes into a song. I'm not about to sing it. You need to watch the movie. But I'm saying, she's saying, I'm waiting on my miracle. Like, bless me with my miracle. I'm tired of living off the gifts of other people. I want my own. She's desperate for it. She's begging for it. But while she's begging, she's still disappointed. And it's not coming from a place of, I need to do this to uplift. No, I need to do this to validate. Because I don't feel like I belong here. I'm in a space where everybody else is thriving, but I'm not. I'm not, drive, I'm not thriving. Who's going to talk to my disappointment? Who's going to speak to it? Who's going to give me the space to say that I, I, I don't like what's going on? I'm disappointed. Surely not the people that's saying not so special, special. I ain't got a space with them. I don't have a space with my own family. Where does that space come from? The cause for disappointment, the reason that disappointment being a divider here, is because we have lost our language and relation with each other to say that, to discern between disappointment and disrespect. It used to be a time where I had a relationship with you enough to say that I'm disappointed and you meant something. But instead, because I have no relation to you, when I say I'm disappointed in you, you take it as disrespect. And now you want to go back to phase one. We just talked about disrespect. You take it as disrespect when it's really no. I'm telling you I'm disappointed in your actions. You, look, sometimes you need a community that holds you accountable even when you don't want it. And when people say they're disappointed in you, it's not for you to take it as a personal attack. Oh my gosh, they hating. No. Disappointment is just that. I had hopes. I had an expectation that wasn't meant. I have to grieve. I have to grieve the idea that I had for you. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to sting. But I have to get it out so that you can deal with it too. If I swallow it and if I just put it, keep it in, that means I'm going to be right back to where I started. We don't, we don't talk about disappointment. And if we can outgrow the disappointment and we insulate the disrespect, getting to know each other would be easy. Community would be easy. However, the family we see is not the family that we are. Nobody really sees the cracks.
and the candle almost went out. Show me. What? No, that's... The cracks were there. They were everywhere. The house was in trouble. The, the candle was... Abuela, I promise that's enough. There is nothing wrong with La Casa Madrigal. The magic is strong. And so are the drinks. Please, music. A bailar, a bailar. So, here we have, again, my job is not to tell you this movie. Go watch it, all right? But cracks in the house. Now, this house is their center. It's their community. It is the source of their very ability. So those cracks, and we can go ahead and mute the video. Um, those cracks are actually dangerous. But here, the cracks aren't about what, what's in the house. For us, cracks are in us. The third thing that keeps us divided and that we don't talk about are the disguises. Yep, your Holy Ghost. In the movie, if you watch it, Mirabelle goes on a journey. She encounters um, her sister, Louisa. Louisa is very, very strong. Very strong. Like she could, she could lift anything, right? And that's who she was until that's who she wasn't. Sometimes we connect with people and what they can do instead of who they are. And it's not just about the people that are far away from us. It's about the people that are closest to us. She lived in the same house with Louisa and still didn't know that she was suffering. Why? Because her greatest strength was her greatest weakness. Yes, I'm strong. But that doesn't mean I can be strong all the time. Yes, I can lift things. Doesn't mean I need to lift your burdens too. I know I'm talking to some Louises right here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay down your street. Because you are seen as the strong one, people abuse that and see you as the strong one. They come to you even, even in times where you need somebody too. Everybody went through a struggle, yet you're the person that's holding everybody else up. You're the person that they go into for, for counsel and direction and, and strength. But meanwhile, ain't nobody holding me. What about me? She had connected with the disguise. I have to be this for everybody else, but I really ain't that. I'm really not what I do. She sees her other sister, Isabella. Isabella is the perfect daughter. Isabella is the, is the one that they laud and praise and say she's the next one. But Isabella had a problem too. Being perfect all the time is a problem. Being perfect for people that want perfection and because they don't want to strive for it themselves, they put all the pressure on you to be perfect. So now, just one mess up for me is like 10 mess ups from anybody else. Like you the straight A student and you get one B, everybody loses their minds. Meanwhile, everybody like you, you head of the C students. They don't want to strive for it themselves, but the pressure's on you to do it. 
I'm talking to some Isabellas in here too. You got all the pressure on you to do everything right. Meanwhile, you're struggling inside because you don't know what else you can do. You don't know what else there is besides being this perfect person. She connected with a disguise. She even finds the guy that didn't nobody want to talk about, Uncle Bruno. She, talk, he, she finds Uncle Bruno. Yeah, he was hiding in the house. And he had a disguise. Because everybody wanted him to be something, and he wasn't. They made him the villain to their own story, and he wasn't. He said, we don't talk about Bruno because, oh, 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 this. And then you find him, and it's nothing like what you expected. Again, my, my job is not to recreate the story, and I'm already past my time, but we connect with disguises in people because we just connect with what they do and not who they are. It's easier. It's easier. Oh, that's Brother Tim. He played a keyboard. Well, that's not all he do. Hey, can you play for this bar mitzvah? No. I see I got another amen. We connect with people by what they do for us, but not who they are to God. And it's only there can we create the community that is necessary. See, God's will is so perfect that he put everybody around you that you need. But the problem is you actually got to find the people that you need and not connect with what they do, but connect with who they are. Here's, here's a question, and this is a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm done being spiritual. There is a person that walked in here, right, and you have need of a book bag. You didn't say anything. You just walked in, it's like, hey, I've been really needing a book bag. I haven't really gone to get it yet. I need a book bag. You walked in this, this and you didn't, I, I didn't say nothing, but you need a book bag. I don't know your age. Who here walked in here and needed a book bag? You needed a book bag? Come here. I'm doing this to prove a point. I'm doing this to prove a point. Now, this was sent to my house by accident. Okay? This is your bag now. Okay? You didn't talk to me. I don't know you. I don't know you from a can of paint. But because we're connected and we're brothers in Christ, your need was sent to me. So... If he would have been stayed in disguise and said, no, nah, I really don't need it. I, I ain't lie like that. He wouldn't have it now. He would have just sat in the seat, just be like, oh, I'm going to sit there like everybody else. Meanwhile, he gets a gift. All right, bro. But get the point in this. Get the point in this. It's only when you put away your disguises that people can actually be what they were supposed to be for you. It's, you you got to stop thinking that you have to be something for everybody else and start being who you were called to be. We need you. We don't need your representative. We, we out here and we're struggling and we need the things that you get. We need your gifts. But you're too busy looking at everybody else's gifts. Mirabelle was in a family of people that had gifts, but she didn't understand her own gift. She didn't understand that, yes, they don't appreciate it. Yes, they can't understand it, but I'm gifted too. I'm gifted too. Like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm out my notes right now. I got one more. I got one more clip. Uh, go ahead, Fonzo, if you got it, go ahead and play it, and I'm, I'm going to end it because I'm already over my time. Need a donut. We 
She was tripping off a door, though. This whole thing started because her door didn't light up. This whole thing started because when she put her hand on the door, it just went away. And then at the end, everything is broken. The candle is gone. The magic is over with. Ain't nobody got no gifts. Everybody's normal again. They give it to her to do. They, give it, they recognize, hey, she's been with us the whole time. This is her moment. We give it to her. And she does the same action that failed. She does the same action was her biggest disappointment. She does it one more time. Oh, here we go. She does it one more time. Not because she's expecting anything, but she does it one more time. And what happens is that not only does she get a door, but she gets the house. And not only does she get the house, but she gets the region. And not only is she changing and she's replacing what it is that has been, no, she's not helping the candle anymore. She became the candle. She was the one, she was the source of everybody else's gifts now. What I'm saying is you're looking for doors and God's trying to give you a house. You're, you're looking for opportunities to thrive where you see everybody else thrives. And God said, that's not you. That's not for you. Don't worry about the doors that disappear. Don't worry about the disrespect. Don't worry about the disappointment that you face when it. Don't worry about the disguises that you see. I got you on a different path and I got you on a different assignment and your assignment is not compared to anybody else. Your assignment is compared to the vision that I have for you. That ambition that I gave you, I put inside you. That ain't yours, that's mine. And I will get what I put in. You're the real gift. I'm not looking for anything that you can do. I'm looking for you. God's looking for you. God put you here, not so that you can show us what we think you're supposed to be. God put you here for us because there is something inside you we need. And he will get it. One way or another, God will get his gift. He's going to get his gift. You are the real gift. Stop wasting time with what everybody else calls success. And focus on what God called you to do. Again, I'm out of time and I need to, I need to fast track this because we do have communion after this. But for all of those, and I don't want you to rush this altar because I got this I'm gonna, because I'm going to do it really quickly. For those who have struggled with either disrespect, disappointment, or disguise. I just need you to stand where you are. Yeah. 
புரிப I'm going to take this moment because I see most of the house is standing. I see most of the house has struggled. And I see most of the house has not been able to genuinely connect with community, the community that God has assigned you. I'm not talking about just this church. I'm talking about kingdom. There are people assigned to you that you haven't let get close because disrespect There are people assigned to you that you have not let get close because you've been disappointed before. And there are people assigned to you that you have not let get close because you still have your disguise on. I want to speak to all of that. All of that ends today. Every obstacle that has been in your way, it ends today. Every interaction that broke your spirit every conversation that ended in an argument every circumstance that had you questioning god this is the moment where he's going to speak to you this is the moment where he makes it right and he shows you that i don't just have a door i don't just have one thing for you i have everything for you father in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you so much we thank you that you gave you gave your son and your son became flesh and he took on he took on the punishment and the condemnation of our actions that we can be seen blameless in your sight god we come to you not as who we claim to be god we come to you as sons and daughters as brothers and sisters and say that we've been hurt say that we've been disrespected God we have been disappointed and we've been in disguise but here in this moment we say that you are sovereign that your thoughts are not our thoughts your ways are not our ways and yet we might not understand what you're doing we might not understand in the moments we might not understand the decisions that you made but we trust you God our circumstances may change God whether we have all money or no money we trust you. God if we have all the friends or if you if you take away all the friends God we trust you. God whatever circumstance has good or bad we trust you. We trust you with everything that we have. This is that moment. This is that moment. I just need a few people. I just need a few people. God is going to speak to you if you speak to him first. If you speak to him first, he's going to speak to you right now. <laughs>